Hi folks, today I'm going to show you how to make the six strand braid from the Hedeby Harbour Smocker. We are going to look at the basic finger braiding technique for shorter cords, how to use bobbins to make longer lengths, how the weight and number of threads in each strand changes the finished braid, and finally how to make a tough cabled loop to start your braid using Sally Pointer's technique. Her video on making plied and cabled cords is linked in the description below. In the finds from the harbour at Hedeby, which was a part of Denmark at the time, was a large fragment from the front of a smocker, a garment also known as a hanger rock, traeger rock or apron dress. Running down the front of the fragment was a dart and it was covered by a delicate braid just one to two millimetres wide. The braid had six strands which were plaited together to make this beautiful flat braid. Each of the strands is two ply thread. It's been Z spun and S plied as you can see in that diagram just there. Now while it's impossible to see from these pictures, Ingerhag indicates that the braid had three red strands and three yellow. The original braid was absolutely teeny tiny. Here's a little test piece that I made with the absolutely finest wool yarn that I have. It's really, really tricky to keep the braid even with thread this fine, which is a testament to the skill of our predecessors. As you can see there, that braid does actually measure two millimetres, which was the widest point of the extant find. I cannot imagine trying to get this braid any thinner than that, to be honest. To demonstrate this technique, I'm going to be using a much chunkier yarn because it's almost impossible to see this fine, fine braid working up, especially if you're just learning the braid in the first place. So we're going to move to this chunkier yarn for the demonstration. However, at the end, I will show you how I achieved this braid in such fine yarn as well. Okay. Once you've fixed your strands at the top there, I've just used the handle of my basket this time. You need a nice fixed point to work from because the tension matters a lot with this braid. I'll explain a little bit more as we go along. Basically, if you vary your tension as you go along, the pattern will switch sides. So hold on to that thought. To begin, you want to split your strands into two sets of three, left and right. And for the first movement we're going to do, we're going to take this green on the very outside right here, cross it over to, to the middle. Now as you do this, make sure you don't twist these threads. It's very, very easy with this braid to get out of the pattern. So you have started there with the colours alternating. That's the pattern that I want at the end with this braid. It's my absolute favourite way to make this braid. If you change the order of your threads, your pattern is going to change quite dramatically. So just be very cautious, especially as you're starting off, because it's really easy at the top here for these to get mixed up. So to begin, we're going to take our outer right hand thread. In this case, it's the green and we're going to cross it over two. So it's going to come over these two into the middle here. Run your fingers up. Just make sure that's pinched nicely at the top there. For the second part, we're going to use this outer left hand thread here, in this case the brown. We're going to lift these two here, pass it under two and over the thread that we've just brought from the right. Again, make sure that you're keeping these two in order and not letting them twist up on each other. As you make that pass, and you bring your fingers back to the neutral starting position, everything should be alternated again. Don't want any thread of the same colour next to each other at the end of any pass. So I'll show you that again. Over two, run your fingers along the thread to make sure it's not catched anywhere. Over two, fingers along. So 
good to watch out for. Those two are trying to untwist at this point. Don't want to let that happen. I'm going to work with your green. Lift your two. Hook underneath. Pull it tight to the middle. Once again, you've got your alternating colours. Work very carefully at the beginning because until these are settled, they will try and wriggle about quite a lot. Cross your right hand thread over two. Lift hook your left hand thread and your fingers along these two all the way to the bottom pull it tight just a little gentle tug will ease everything back into where it wants to be over two run along under two and hook pull over two under two and hook across the first thread that we moved What happened there was it had started to tangle at the bottom because I'd missed one swoop along the threads. That movement of just pulling down to the bottom each time makes it a lot easier. Now obviously with longer braids this can be a bit tricky and I'll show you later on how to do that with using bobbins but for now these lengths just run your fingers along now something's gone wrong there you see I've got two colors next to each other now that one is is that one wants to sit there so just keep a very close eye as you're going along but you haven't lost your pattern it's all it takes sometimes and sometimes you may find that you do have done a couple and you've missed them you need to go back a little way but it's not that difficult to do because you know you should always end up with alternating colors like that now, as you can see here, this is trying to twist. And this is one of the things with this braid that you'll find a little bit tricky as you're working on it. And also, once the braid is finished, I'll show you in a little bit how just how curly it can be. Now, looking at that there, kind of looks like the diagram I showed you, but that's actually not the pattern part that we're after. Because if we turn it over, you can see there that this is the pattern that we're after. It's a little bit difficult to see because you've only done a tiny bit so far. That is the pattern shown in the diagram from Inga Hag's work. It appears on the back of the braid because of the technique that I'm using. Because I don't want to risk changing my tension halfway through. I'm keeping the tension quite firm as I'm working, which will mean that the entire pattern will appear on the back of the braid there instead of varying as you go down because you can make this braid look like the pattern on the front as you work if you keep your tension a little bit looser. But it can be quite difficult to sustain that as you go down and it slows you down a fair bit as well. So working the pattern on the rear side of the braid makes it a lot quicker to do. Now you've seen the basic technique, I'm going to go away and finish this braid and I'll be back in a little bit to talk about ways to deal with this twist that we're starting to see appear. See you in a mo. And here we have a short section of the finished braid. 
Now, you can see it has a very definite twist to it. It's extremely curly whirly. This is because of the uneven braiding pattern. It's kind of inevitable that you'll get a small amount of twist with this type of cord. Not ideal for applying to clothing. And I wouldn't recommend using this braid for drawstrings and things like that really. It, it takes an awful lot of time to make in comparison to some of the simpler cords. It's beautifully decorative, this pattern. As you can see there, that is the pattern that you're gonna end up with. This was what you were seeing as we were working our way down the braid. This was facing us as we were braiding. This is what you get on the other side, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. Now, to get this twisted little number ready to apply to your clothing, you're gonna need to flatten it. Now, you can do this by pressing it with a steam iron, or you can use something a little bit like this. You can see what I've done there. I pinned the braids down. You soak them first, very gently agitate them in the water. Make sure that the fibers are soaked all the way through. Gently press down, move the fibers around in the water gently until the whole braid is saturated and then very, very carefully push out as much water as you can so you're left with a damp braid, which you then pin down flat to a bit of wool. You can use a pin board, like a cork board, something like that if you haven't got a piece of wood lying around. And now what I'll show you is how this braid here is made with exactly the same wool in exactly the same way. The only difference with this one is that it has been pinned down to dry. And then we'll look at what that looks like when it's finished. So, released from the cork board, from the piece of wood rather, you can see that that is now behaving beautifully. That's ready to sew onto clothing. This is its tricky little unflattened number. Very, very simple to get that twist out using this method. There we go. From twisty to behaving. Now here, I've got some other examples of what this braid can look like with different weights and thicknesses of yarn. This one is made of a soft roving yarn with two threads in each strand, as the original was. But I haven't plied these together. I've just used them as two separate strands and you've pulled them into the braid together. This one here in the middle is very, very similar. It's again, two threads in each strand not plied together as you work. So if you want a thicker braid for any reason, you can use two threads in each strand to achieve that. This is a similar weight of yarn. It's a little bit thicker than this one, but it's only using one thread in each strand. Makes a very neat little braid. Now, as you can see here with these two braids, they both begin with an integrated loop at the very beginning of them. This is really handy if you're making a belt, something like that, and you want an integrated loop. And I'm gonna show you how I do that in just a second. You can see on this one particularly, very tightly cabled to begin the belt. Okay, so to make a braid with a twisted loop for the top like that, I'll show you the technique now. Now this one is easiest when you are working with two threads in each strand. So what I've got here is six strands, doubled over. I'm gonna grab hold in the middle like that. And I'm going to decide roughly how big I want my loop to be, probably about that big. You're going to get hold, this is your slightly shorter end, here, 
and you're going to separate your threads into three groups. Now I'm going to use different colours in each one just because I like how that looks. So this is your starting point. What you're going to do is you're going to apply these two together bring it down towards you. Apply them together. Bring it down over and just move your nail up a tiny bit to hold that twist in. It's going to want to escape and if it escapes a little bit at the beginning it's not too much of a problem. So it's been away from you turn it towards you and clamp down hard with your nail. You can see there what we're achieving is this really nicely tightly cabled cord here. Now you can do it the other way. You can say, okay, well these are Z spun, so I'm going to S spin them and move up, but then you start at the bottom to do it that way. It doesn't particularly matter which one you pick at this point, as long as you stick to it all the way along. notice as well as I'm going along I've got this held firmly in these fingers and stopping that twist coming undone as we work down. I'm nearly there now, do a little bit more and then we'll be ready to start braiding again. The two thread version of the six strand braid. After a while check your length I'm fairly happy with that as a loop length to begin the braid. So you bring the two back together. And you want to clamp it with something to stop it coming undone. Usually I use a sewing clip for this. Just hold it like that lightly until you're ready to start braiding. Now what you need to remember is you're not going to be able to cut this at the end to release it from your fixed point. So make sure you're hooking it over something open-ended so you can slide it off at the end rather than having to cut it off. If you haven't got anything open-ended you can just use an extra little loop of thread there and I'll show you what that looks like in the setup in just a moment. So there's your little loop of extra fabric there as I described. We are fixed to that at the top here. So what we now need to do is bring our threads back into the single colour groupings ready to start. Now you could, if you wish, make the braid with the two colours together. You might want to apply them together properly first before you start if that's the case. However, if you're going back to two strands of the same colour in each strand of the braid, then we need to sort that out. So I'm going to do that now and fast forward through it because it takes a little while just to get everything back where you want it. So you come up to the join there, make sure the loop is nice and even on both sides. I then pop my clip back on just above where we're going to start to braid, just for the very beginning to keep everything where you want it. So you spread out your colours into these patterns that you're going to work from at the beginning. So if that's your alternating, in this case, green and pink, green and pink, green and pink, then you need to bring threads from this side over to match. So off we go.
You can see what I'm doing there is just very lightly applying them together at the top to keep them together while I'm fiddling about with them. You don't have to do this, it just makes it a little bit easier to get it all tight together at the top to begin your next part of the braid. Keeping a nice firm hold on everything, just for the first few passes. We'll keep it nice and tight at the top there. So we're going to take our pink over to. Then our green is going to come under to and over the pink that we first worked. Bring our greens, just twist them together at the top there. Over two, that pink should be on the outside there. Keep these nice and tight at the beginning. And now you can see that braid pattern is starting to appear. The process is exactly the same when you're using two threads per strand only difference is you have to be aware of keeping them nicely together as you bring everything through. So once again, with this one it's even wider so it's a flatter braid, has a flatter profile because it's wider as well because there's double the strands. So if you are after a flat braid, doubling up on your strands may be your best bet. And we flip it, this is the pattern. Tension on this isn't quite right. As you can see, you can actually see the pattern fairly well on that side as well. And this is the case when you're using a different material different type of wool, different thicknesses, different weights, you're going to find the braid works up ever so slightly different each time. Just have a play, have an experiment, see what you can come up with. I'm going to finish this off and I'll see you in a bit. And here we are, we've got that lovely strong cabled loop on the top there. That's what you can see on the reverse side of the braid. And there we have that gorgeous six strand pattern. Now, the final thing that I want to show you in this video is how to make this six strand braid with bobbins. Here I'm just using modern lightweight lace bobbins, still waiting for my authentic ones. <laughs> And these could be really, really handy if you need to make longer lengths of braid and you're finding that the lengths that you've got are just becoming too problematic, too many cords getting tangled and things like that, then these lace bobbins can be absolutely invaluable. You can pick them up on Amazon for not very much at all. And they have fast become my favourite little tool. So as you can see, the length of the cord is held on the bobbin. So we're only working a short amount at a time. I like to put a pillow underneath so I can keep them where I want them. I'll show you at the end how you can work them just using your fingers if you'd rather. But especially when you're learning, this could be a really handy technique. So what we're going to do first is take our length of thread here. We're going to secure it to the bobbin. Now, this knot doesn't have to slip. In fact, the opposite, you don't want it to move. You want to make sure this thread isn't going to slip off the bobbin at any time. So I use a double knot just to secure it up tightly around the head there. What you then want to do is start winding your thread onto the bobbin. And as you come up to around the height that you want it to sit. You don't need to have these exactly the same. You just want them fairly similar. 
you want to do is grab your thread, make a loop like that and just pop the head of the bobbin inside that loop, draw it back and that will temporarily hold it at the height that you want it while you're braiding. I like to spread my bobbins out a little bit as I begin and the technique is exactly the same as before. You can come over to with this thread here and you're going to bring this one under these two. But as you're working with bobbins and the bobbins are what you're holding, each spread over two, under two and cross. And you're just going to repeat that pattern. Now because you're not holding tightly at the top here, you are going to need to tighten this manually as you go. So you pick up these two, over two, that's now going to be in the third position on this side. Cross that under two and over this one. Little tighten. Pick up two, over two, under two and cross. Always just come back after you've done a pass. If things start getting a little bit out of control, then just line everything up. Make sure you've got your alternating colours as you want them. Carry on. Pick up two. Over two. Pick up your left hand side. Over under two and cross. You're going to keep repeating that technique eventually you're going to find that you get all the way down to here and you need to let out some thread so all we're going to do is come up here unwind a little bit gentle pull on that one and it will bring it back up to the top there and that's now extended ready to start again show you that again Here's your loop thread there, just pinch that there, unwind a little bit so that you've got some excess here. Hold on to this thread here which is your working thread part of the top there. Gently tighten it. There you go, down and ready to carry on. Now this is a very long process. Making braid this fine with this technique does take time. You may find it's easier for you to work in a slightly different way, which I'll show you now. If you want to use the bobbins with the simple finger braiding action, you can do. You need to have them in a place where they can dangle a little bit so they don't keep getting caught so much. But you do exactly the same technique again. You just got to be very careful each time that you don't let the bobbins get tangled at the bottom. So just there, that's trying to loop around that one. So exact same process as you did before. Coming over to, to the middle, and then under two and over that one you've just moved. And this can be a little bit quicker and it does make keeping the tension more even because you have the weight of the bobbins pulling down on the braids. Just got to make sure that each time you make a pass that those bobbins aren't tangling around each other at the bottom there. around themselves so every now and then you just have to do a quick untangle. But if you are set on making a very long lengths of braid, let's go down the front of your smocker for example, then this technique, although slower, will be your friend. 
quite like the little tinkly noise it makes. <laughs> and there we go. And here are our finished six strand Hedeby braids. Aren't they gorgeous? Here we've got the super fine two millimeter braid made with the bobbins. This is the one that's the same width as the original found at Hedeby. Absolutely teeny tiny. This is the finished braid from the demonstration. These are made with a single thread in each strand. The wool I've used is really smooth and lends itself beautifully to this kind of braid. Here we've got the wider, flatter braids that have the cabled cord in a loop to start the braid at the top. There are two threads in each strand for these braids. That's why they seem wider and flatter than the version we just looked at. These I think would make really really good garters around the top of leg wraps to hold them up. Or in a chunkier yarn, again doubled in each strand, they would make a really nice woven belt. And lastly we have this chunky braid made with two threads of roving yarn for each strand. On this example you can see how the pattern comes out if instead of alternating your colours, you start with the same colours on each side. It makes a rather lovely diamond effect. I think I still prefer the alternating ones though. I've absolutely loved making these. Even though they're a little bit slower to work up, they're still one of my favourite braids. Whichever colour or pattern you choose, they're going to be a fine addition to your kit. Especially if your character is from Denmark. I even love them in grayscale. <laughs> you can see how the complex knot work adds interest even when there's no colour. Thank you all so very much for watching folks. I hope you found the video helpful. As always if you've got any comments or questions pop them down there or come and find me on Facebook. Don't forget to check out the research links in the description, particularly that video link for Sally Pointer's channel. If you haven't found her yet I'd seriously recommend checking her out because she does some amazing work. If you're new to the channel check out this Cords and Braids playlist next. Have a fabulous day everybody and I will see you soon. Happy braiding! Bye!